to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, June 13th, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, a New York terror alert conditions law enforcement for far-right violence. Then, did FEMA anticipate the immigration crisis? And Alex Jones breaks down the U.S. connection to Al-Qaeda. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I said that I had a big announcement, and it's this. Obama is now the head globally of Al-Qaeda. Well, as a flood of illegal immigrants surges across the border, some people are estimating that number could hit 90,000 by the end of the year. Well, somehow, all of those bizarre FEMA requests are now making a little bit more sense. Now, we've been reporting on all of these bizarre requests, including 24-hour emergency food supplies, hygiene kits, clothing and temporary housing, biohazard equipment and waste removal services, and of course, buses to shuttle individuals from city to city in the event of some massive exodus. And so we're thinking, you know, well, this is strange. What are they planning for? Well, it turns out that these are exactly the types of items that are going to this surge of illegal immigrants. Now, before Big Sis left her perch as head of the DHS, she left a rather ominous warning about a coming natural disaster to the U.S. like none other the country has ever seen. Now, it should be noted that the federal government has made a plan a long time ago. They developed this sort of military contingency plan to deal with an influx of illegal immigrants hitting the border. And they wanted a plan to quell domestic disturbances in the event of this. Of course, this is what's happening today. It was called Operation Garden Plot, and it lists indicators of potential violence. And check these out. High unemployment and crime rates among minority groups, protests arising from income disparity among minority and majority groups, migrations of large numbers of minority groups, and protests by minority groups over conditions such as wages, jobs, housing, and police brutality. Now, of course, doesn't that sound exactly like everything that's been going on recently? Obviously, it's very obvious to see that we've got this huge flow of, of migration of people across the border, all these illegal aliens coming, we're told to just turn away. But of course, we're seeing a ton of protests for amnesty and wages. And who do they think are gonna replenish the ranks for all of these protests? You know, they've got a full army now, 90,000 people by the end of the year, people that are gonna be fighting over the bad wages these corporations think they're gonna be paying all of these people when they get them here. These people are already complaining about cold eggs. You think they're really gonna sit quietly while you think you're gonna pay them pennies on the dollar? Now, part of this Operation Garden Plot includes Rex 84. It's a framework that outlined a plan for restoration of order, also known as martial law. Now, this plan was partly revealed during the Iran-Contra scandal. Up on screen are photocopies of the Miami Herald, and this goes back into the 1980s, when they had congressional hearings dealing with shadow government and martial law. There's the headline, the secret government, and it talks about secret summits, a plan to take over the government. Uh, and it shows the people that were in charge of the continuity of government, Dick Cheney and others. And then we have a congressional hearing where we have Congressman Jack Brooks and others during Iran-Contra bringing up the secret plans, and they're told by Congressman Inouye that that can't be discussed. It's a national security issue. So here we're thinking, you know, this is just a premeditated plan to flood the country with voters who are going to vote for bigger government. But it's more than that. It's deeper than that. This is exactly what they've been planning for since probably before 1984. This immigrant inflow emergency will be used to institute martial law. Their plan is right there. It's spelled out all of the potential violence indicators they have checked off. and. FEMA anticipated this crisis. 
What more proof do you need? It's, it's right there in front of you that this was a premeditated crisis. Now, people have, of course, been making the trek you know, across the border forever, since there was a border, of course. But why so many people now? How are so many unaccompanied minor aliens making the trek from Central America through a virtual gang war zone to cross the border here seemingly so easily? Like, why so many now? And I'm not the only one that's wondering this. Ex-border agents agree. This is premeditated. They release a statement, the National Association of Former Border Patrol Officers. It reads, this is not a humanitarian crisis. It is a predictable, orchestrated, and contrived assault on the compassionate side of Americans by her political leaders. And it's knowingly putting minor illegal alien children at risk for purely political purposes. Certainly, we are not gullible enough to believe that thousands of unaccompanied minor Central American children came to America without the encouragement, aid, and assistance of the United States government. And of course, they're already doing this. You know, people are already saying that it's the, the de facto amnesty policies that were put set out for, by the Obama administration that are encouraging people, you know, hey, if your kids make it across the border, we'll take them, we won't send them back, we'll take really good care of them, in fact. Um, but they are already shoving it in our faces. Are you demonizing the children? Shame on you. These are kids. Just look at them. They're just kids. How dare you question them being here? Representative Luis Gutierrez is a vocal advocate of immigration reform, and he told Breitbart News on Wednesday, shame on anybody that wants to demonize children. Of course, these children that are entering the country illegally, these are just kids, and he's saying shame on anybody who questions that, anybody who doesn't give them instant amnesty. And it's the th same thing that's happening over at NPR. Now, this was on a recent broadcast of NPR's On Point show. The host was joined by some immigration activists who suggested that all the youth illegally entering the U.S. in record numbers are desperate refugees who need the full support of the government. But one radio listener saw right through all this propaganda and called into the show and he said, with respect to your guests, I would like to just make a comment that when I hear phrases like they're clutching their teddy bears or they're wetting their pants in front of judges, this is an approach where we're being told that all 40,000 of these minor immigrants that have come here since October are all the same. This is a technique used to stir passion. And of course, these comments raise red flags. He said, I don't believe that we should, without question, accept 40,000 under 18 immigrants who are breaking the law. And not only did their parents break the law, they might even be coming here because they have been paid by drug gangs to engage in the drug business in America. And that's, and that's the truth. I mean, we already have Mexican drug cartels. They can be found in 2,000, more than 2,000 of our U.S. cities. I'm working on a report that will be coming out next week where a 14-year-old a boy admits being abducted by the uh, Sinaloa drug cartel when he was 11 years old, and he was forced to participate in at least four beheadings by the time he was 14 years old. So we have no idea who these children are, and that's not just coming from me. Arizona Governor Jan Brewer, who, as you know, a lot of these illegal immigrants are being shipped to Arizona, she's concerned as well that MS-13 gang members could be coming in with these kids. Now, in a letter that she sent to House Speaker Boehner and the Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, she asks them to put an end to this intentional and unconscionable crisis at the border. And those are her words calling this intentional. Now, she points out that by the Obama administration's own estimation, a quarter million alien minors are expected to cross through the Rio Grande sector by the end of next year. Now, she says MS-13, one of the world's most notorious international gangs, has strong ties to several of the Central American countries where these aliens are arriving. Now, the administration's refusal to properly verify that violent criminals are not among those entering the U.S. shows an alarming lack of concern for our homeland's security. And that is absolutely what border agents have told InfoWars exclusively as well. They say they are overwhelmed, there's no way they can patrol the borders, and that the worst of the worst criminals are slipping through the cracks. Just look at this footage from earlier today here in Texas. It shows an estimated 30 illegal aliens jumping out of an SUV that's being chased by a cop car. I mean, that's just one SUV carrying 30 illegal aliens in it.
absolute lawlessness, but we're being asked to look away. All reporters go down to San Antonio and try and get some footage, and they're detained and taken down to a basement. Meanwhile, these illegal aliens are being given the VIP treatment. But here, just in this San Antonio facility, we have, you know, a thousand something kids. They're being taken care of at $250 a day, a taxpayer on the taxpayer dime. So if you stop and do the math, that is a half a million dollars a day at one facility, and yet we're not allowed to know what's going on, how our taxpayer dollars are being spent. And it's not just us, it's not just reporters, it's our lawmakers as well. Obama is taking some lawmakers on a tour of one of these facilities, and they're not allowed to bring any recording devices. Basically, the tour says, no recording devices, no questions, no interactions with staff and children, and oh, we'll provide you with some photos that you can use after the event. So of course, that's very typical of this administration. They tell any journalists who want to, you know, get ask questions of the president, they say, oh, go check the White House website. There you can find pictures that we have for you and any official press releases of the president. So of course, these pictures, just like those press releases, are going to be heavily sanitized. There's not going to be any proof or any evidence or any true documentation of what's going on there. Because it's going to be heavily sanitized. Now, one congressional staffer told the Daily Caller, he said, this isn't some totalitarian closed society that's trying this tactic. This is our own government. They clearly wouldn't be offering up this kind of dog and pony show if they weren't hiding a very ugly truth somewhere. Now, he is exactly right about that, except he's wrong about this not being a totalitarian society. So, of course, this should be an outrage. People should be really concerned about that. Our own government should be concerned that there could be violent gangs coming in across the border with this huge surge of illegal aliens. But that's not what they're concerned about. I mean, they're not concerned about them. They are all pro-government. They're worried about the anti-government people, the people who have a question about what the administration's doing with all these illegal aliens or how they're going to be spending our taxpayer dollars. If you have questions like this, well, you're just anti-government and you are the terrorists. You are the real threat. And of course, this is the civil unrest they've been preparing for that we've been telling you about why the police are being militarized. Now, this is Washington Times today. Pentagon studying protesters to prep for mass civil breakdown. They are studying how social movement mobilizes, what starts it in the first place, and their aim is to find when is the tipping point of civil uprisings. So they want to know where exactly the protests turn violent and basically how far can they go, how much can they push us, and at what point will people, ha when will they have enough? So obviously they're studying social media and Twitter, they're following protesters and activists, Anyone who questions anyone who is anti-government, right? It's not the illegal aliens who don't really care about this country and what we stand for. They are going to demand that the government take care of them even more and better than they are right now because they're throwing away the cold eggs that they're giving them allegedly. Now, cops are also being told to look out for more of this anti-government far-right extremism. Mikhail Thalen reports on a new counterterrorism bulletin that's being passed around to New York State law enforcement. And it tells them specifically, prepare for increased violence from far-right extremists. Now, Alex Jones has been saying, get ready, they are going to prepare another false flag that has to deal with far-right extremists or patriots. But the fact is, most of the people in this country right now are anti-government. They have record low approval ratings. Now we have a failing Veterans Administration. All of our veterans are out there suffering, waiting to get health care. Some of them are homeless. Meanwhile, we're getting VIP treatment to illegal aliens. So of course, people are going to be fed up even more. Why are our taxpayer dollars going for this and not for that? And Law enforcement, your local law enforcement is being given war machinery to handle their civil unrest. People, they know we are about to hit critical mass. They've been prepping and planning for this. Meanwhile, while we're dealing with this, Iraq is experiencing an exodus of its own.